This next chapter is on Google hacking. What's Google hacking? Has anybody ever read the book Google hacking by Johnny Long? Famous book. That's where a lot of this comes from. So Google is your friend, right? Google is a great tool. Google can be used for good. It can also be used for evil. Google's motto is do no evil, but Google can be used for looking for things by malicious people. So we'll talk about Google scanning and then Google hacking. How many people have used Google? Everybody, right? Some of the things we'll be doing, the basics, some hacking techniques, using Google as an anonymous proxy, trolling for email addresses, etc. Right? What's the step, first step again in attacking or penetration testing? Recon, Google is one of your best tools for that. Hackers find things all the time using Google. There's a whole group built just around Google hacking. Right? How many people have used Google's advanced search capabilities? They know the special Google functions like the site command, site colon, or the URL, in URL, et cetera. So this is your standard search, and this is what most people use. They just use the regular search tool. Sometimes they use a Google search toolbar, right? How many people have ever gone in and configured their preferences? Right? This is what you can configure. You can determine whether or not it protects you from unsafe or malicious sites by turning off the safe search. You can determine how many results are shown on a page, right? Now advanced search is where you get, really get to utilize some of the power features and capabilities of Google. We can configure it to just to look for PDF files. Normally you would be looking for extension, what? Say ext colon dot PDF, right? Or PDF. And we'll see how that shows up in the search, because it'll actually show us. We'll turn on certain things, and you get to see what the Google search looks like. And you can save those searches, so you can rerun them. Here we're looking only for things under progressive.com. Progressive is an insurance company, right? They sell insurance. So we're looking for PDFs on sites ending in progressive.com. And maybe we'll find some interesting PDFs. Here we did that. That resulted in sending a query for the site modifier site colon progressive.com and the file type colon PDF. Okay? Then you don't have to go to the advanced search page. Once you know these, you can shortcut this and you can just type these in on the searches. And proficient searchers don't go to the advanced page anymore. Here we're just searching for pages on progressive.com. How many were returned? 12,000. Sometimes you'll get searches in you know, hundreds of thousands, right? Now we're looking for any page under Progressive.com's websites that, ends in, that contains in a URL the word auto. So we're looking for what kind of insurance? Right? We want it to appear in the URL itself, right? the HTTP colon slash slash blah, blah, blah. Here we found one on a site called autoprogressive.com. Here we found auto in an ASP script right on server side. If we instead of auto insurance, we look for motorcycle insurance, we'll find it where it appears. It can appear in the host name, right? That's the fully qualified domain name for that server. It can also find it in other parts of the URL, like the file portion, file name portion, right? Instead of PDFs, we could look for XML files. XML is what? Extensible markup, which is a very structured markup. It looks like HTML, but it's really used for storing records or other structured data types, right? And so here we found some XML files. So we're looking for, you know, possibly private information. Here we're going to TripSense. And that's a link, which means what? We're looking for any links that point to things which contain TripSense in the link itself. So these would be href URLs. Here's a good guide to all the advanced operators here. You can do these yourself. And I recommend that. We can also use wildcards in Google. Note that Google queries are not face sensitive. So here I'm using the asterisk in a wildcard and I'm saying anything that contains a word and insurance quote. For example, automobile insurance quote. The plus symbol means that this has to appear on that page. So if I'm searching for a certain expression, et cetera, and I put a plus in front of it, 
it won't show me pages unless that word shows up in that page, right? If I put a minus in there, it means what? What's the opposite of a plus? I don't want to see pages where this word shows up, right? So if I turn on a minus sign, it means don't show me anything that contains this. And you can also use the or symbol, so I can say, I want to look for pages that contain auto and insurance, and in the URLs they have either Progressive or Geico. So I'm looking for both those insurance companies. So now let's look at some Google hacking. How do I use Google as an anonymous proxy? It's a neat little trick. So Google has a lot. There's a lot there. Google provides email. They provide file storage now, you know, right, document storage. They scan in books. They have Google Groups. They have all these things. They even have some shopping and other stuff. How would I use Google to go fetch web pages so that the web pages you know, are seen by the remote web servers coming from Google and not from me? Well, I can always go do Google search and try to read stuff out of the cache. But that's not showing me the current web page. Not everything is always cached, right? I want to go get a web page now, look at it, but I don't want it to appear to come from me, the request, but to come from Google. What would you do? Nope. That'll show me the cached web pages. What? I would use the language translator, right? Translate.google.com. Because Google also can translate from one language to another. So let's go there. Everybody go to translate.google.com. And what languages do they support? They support English and Spanish and Portuguese and many other languages. Not every language in the world, just you know, those that are used by a few million people. And I'm going to fetch a web page. And you can ask to have it translated from some language that it's not in. So I'm going to say, translate this for me, please, from Chinese to English. Even though it's an English web page, why would I do that? Because on a web page, if it's not in that language, it's going to leave it alone, right? So if it's already in English, it'll leave it in English and it'll give it to me. So I won't use the detect language. I'll force the language on. I'm going to say it's in Chinese, right? And translate that to English. And then here I'm going to put in a URL, fgm.com, www.fgm.com. It says it's translating it, but is it really translating anything? No, but it's actually showing me the web page, right? Neat trick? That's one way not to be detected. Any questions about that? Sure. OK. I'm going to go back to translate.google.com. Well, first I'm going to say I want to go from Chinese to English, because I know there's no Chinese on there. If I want to translate Chinese web pages, this was also where I'd go, right? And it does a pretty good job of it. But I want to get an English web page. I just want to use this as a proxy. So I say from English, then I put in the URL here in the little box, fgm.com. And then I click on Translate. Now, the people at Google would. So I mean, this is not entirely anonymous. If law enforcement subpoenas Google or serves it with you know, a bench warrant or a subpoena or another legal document, national security letter, they can get that information. So be aware you're not always entirely anonymous. If you want to be really anonymous, go to Kinko's, use cash, you know, use several proxies, and then leave. Or go to a library. Other questions? OK. Here's just an example of it here. Trolling for email addresses. If I want to look for email addresses at progressive.com, right? I put in at sign progressive.com. I can also then restrict it. So I know that they're not on the main web page. I don't want anything with the main web page in here. And I'll get back a whole bunch of hits, hopefully, and they're the addresses of people at that company. This is also a great way to do penetration testing, looking for people's email addresses, looking for their names, et cetera. Now I have people I can send to. I can social engineer them. What's this? Before it let me do some things, Google's actually making me enter a CAPTCHA, right? That's trying to prevent people from running automated scripts. I'm going to stop you and slow you down. 
Network mapping, how do I do that to uh, use Google to network map? Well, I find out server names, right? Here I'm asking for just siteprogressive.com. I'm getting back a list of pages from different servers at Google. Notice that they name them all after fairly useful things, motorcycle, auto, investors, etc. Now I've got what? Targets. Targets of opportunity, targets to go after, right? I can build a whole list of them. And I've done that. I've taken all the different names that I found. I, I searched for them. I sorted them. And I put them in a little notepad box here. Now I've got a whole bunch. And then I would go and look up their IP addresses, right? So here we're looking for progressive.com, but we don't want the main website, www.progressive.com. And you know, we can go through and we can iterate. We can find all of the names to do that. There's a whole bunch of ways to automate the Google hacking because Google provides an API for using their search engines. Anybody can programmatically query Google directly. You can do it from C, C Sharp, a whole variety of different languages and scripting languages, et cetera, right? You can also get tools that do it automatically. One of them is GooScan. And you can actually see this document which shows you how to use GooScan to automate searches against this. Note that if you do this, as Google does have a terms of use, you're violating Google's terms of use condition if you start running, you know, banging on them with massive amounts of automated scans. So they have the right to terminate service to you. You know, they may even come after you. They'll keep a blacklist of uh, IPs. These are our APIs, right? The evil API, the Aura API, those are ones that you'll get, get you blocked if you use them. Chromium is Google's what? Their browser, Chrome. This is a Perl script you can use to get a list of domain names, right? Uses the Google Chrome API, which means it typically runs in the browser. What is Netcraft again? Netcraft is a site where they keep track of what web servers people are running. So I've gone through, I ran the script, I got a whole list of domain names and subdomain names. What's Seat? Seat's another Google hacking tool, right? Uses Google Hacking Database, and it's present on your Backtrack 4. Here's another great Google hacking database. This is from Johnny Long. Johnny Long has gone off to do some other things right now, no relation to me. He's now, um, he's gone to Africa and he's doing work for charity. I met Johnny Long in one of his presentations way out in North Dakota. And he gave a presentation on how he was doing low-tech hacking. He was going around and doing physical hacking of people. So he was following like military types, taking digital photos of them on a plane as they were looking at you know, top secret military documents in the laptop you know, next to him or whatever. Then he followed some of them to their car and he saw that they had confidential documents in the back seat. So he took pictures of those. Then he managed to like actually walk into some defense contractors and he walked around. You know, he said hi to the secretary and walked past him. It was a pretty funny talk and it showed all his slides or whatever. He even showed where some employees had copies of their paychecks. You know, the pay stubs, not the paycheck, but the pay stubs and they threw them around in the back of their car. So he was taking pictures of all the confidential information on them. So Johnny's gone on, but he, when he wrote the Google hacking book and some of the other books um, back in 2006 or so, he, he put great stuff on this website. Now he's gone off and he's basically doing work for charity. Yep. So how do you protect your web server from Google hacking and having people do these things to you? Especially if you don't want them finding any miscellaneous files. A lot of people keep backup copies of their web pages. They even keep sometimes some of the work product that they made the web pages from, including doc files and XLS spreadsheet files and things like that. Disable directory browsing. There's no reason to do this. Sometimes it's also called forceful browsing.